going to talk about how to find a bottle dump today. I hope the lighting isn't too bad. I was going to show you all some of my collection and some of the reason why I dig. Uh, I'm just going to scan across here. You can see the Indians, the eagle on that one right there. Come across here slowly. There's an elk on that one. There's a camel on that one, another Indian. There's an elephant. That's a Blunt Springs bottle. And you can tell that I am an Indian collector. So these are all from the same little town here in the Birmingham area. And to me, they're just one of the coolest looking bottles in the state. So that's kind of what I go after. The value on these, it varies. But I'd say from this end to this end, that's $2,500 worth of bottles. So these crazy 15 foot holes that we're digging that are massive and all the work that we put into, there's substantial value to them. One of our larger holes that we dug here recently, we kind of added all the bottles up that we dug and it ended up being about a $4,000 hole. So to dig one of these giant holes, it can be productive in the sense of you can make money if you want to sell what you find. I sell the stuff that I have duplicates of and I keep the stuff that I like. So this is the stuff that I like. It's not for sale. Don't bother asking. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, actually, I, I do have this one on eBay right now uh, just because I want to get, this one has a small crack in it that I want to get one that doesn't have a crack. So we'll see. But anyways, that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into how to find yourself a location to find these bottles. Now keep in mind, these bottles are going to be in a pre-1915 dump area. Nothing newer than that. All right, well, here we go. Let's talk about it. Okay, guys, you've seen my bottles now. You've seen them kind of cleaned up. You've heard the value, and now I'm sure you're excited to get out there and find some too. Well, guess what? You've seen the videos of us digging? That's the easy part. The hard part is the research that goes on behind it. So you've seen the guys in my videos. You've seen Clayton. You've seen Tristan. You've seen Michael. You've seen my wife and my dad. What you haven't seen is that all of us have spent countless hours of research and time into finding the locations to dig. It's not something where you can just say, okay, Google, I'm looking for a Birmingham city dump from 1900. Guess what? You're not going to find anything. You'll never find anything like that. You have to actually go and find the hard copy, the, the, the newspapers. you got to find everything that's historic to the area, and then you have to literally piece the pieces of the puzzle together to be able to figure out where the city dump is. The only time that there will actually be records is usually now because really and truthfully, the, back then there weren't regulations that, that made them keep up with where the dumps were. So I'm going to give you a couple pointers on how to find these areas and how to find good bottles. First one is you're going to want to become a frequent flyer to your local library. It's going to be a big asset. You're going to have to go to your local library. You're going to have to look in the newspaper archives and you're going to have to pick a time period. Uh, if you want to find the Hutchinson style bottles like I showed you all that I collect, you're going to be looking for stuff that's pre-1913. So that kind of gives you a good idea to start. If you're wanting older, you're going to have to look older. If you want newer, you're going to look newer. Uh, we all around here prefer to stay pre-1920. So if we do any of our research, it's usually right at the turn of the century between about 1890 and 1910. And that gives us a good general place to start. So you're going to want to go to your local library. You're going to want to ask to see the newspaper archives. Once you get into the archives, you're going to need to search for keywords. A couple of those keywords. Garbage. Garbage disposal. Sanitation. Sanitation ditch. Landfill. Broken glass. Any terminology that could have been used to describe the local dump at that time, you need to search for that key term in those newspapers. And a lot of times in the newspaper article, it'll, what it'll be is it won't be uh, the dump is at this location. It'll be uh, Miss Susan at 33401 North Street is complaining about a stench from the local dump because of the southward winds. Okay, so then you piece that pieces, the pieces of the puzzle together. You know where she lived at. You know that there was a southward wind. And you know it had to have been close enough for her to smell it. So that puts you so close to it that all you have to do is take the time to go out and find it. So your newspapers are a big part. The next big part is going to be your Sanborn maps. I know I've talked to y'all in the past about this, and I actually have a video, but it's been so long ago now, I wanted to kind of revamp it and go back through this stuff. So your Sanborn maps, where can you find them? You can find them online. You can find them through the Library of Congress. Um, sometimes even your local museums will have some, which is nice. I know that our local museum here, the Bessemer Hall of History, actually has printed out portfolios full 
of these actual Sanborn maps. Your Sanborn maps, what they're going to do for you is they're going to let you know where the locations of the buildings were at the time, maybe your bottlers. They're going to let you know where houses were that are no longer there. They're going to let you know all kinds of stuff that you wouldn't know without them. I mean, it's really going to make things easier. And one of the key things you're going to want to look for on these Sanborn maps is possibly outhouses. If you want a privy dig, that's a great place to start. We've just started venturing into that. We'll have some videos coming on that shortly. These Sanborn maps will show you exactly where the privy were. And all you have to do is take a probe with you and probe the ground and you'll find them usually pretty quick. It's, it's amazing. I don't know why we never did it before. So <laughs> anyways, that's, that's a good place to start is privies. But aside from that, the Sanborn map will show you the creeks. And the reason that can be important is at least down here in the south, they rerouted a lot of the creeks, so they are rerouted, however you want to say it. Uh, if the creek went through the middle of town and it was causing problems, they'd just take and dig a new ditch and they'd move the creek around the town. So why is the creek important? Because they put city dumps next to the creeks. Back then, like I said, there was no regulations to keep them from doing this. A lot of times, some towns, like the Brookside, the bottle that had the elk on it, that town actually dumped their trash into the creek. So their dump was, was the creek. So that's why you see a lot of people walking creeks. But a lot of times the dump was right next to a creek, about a mile out of the city center and close to a graveyard. So that's a few things you can check off. Okay, if I'm, am I within a mile? Is there a creek or a swampy area? Is there a graveyard? If there is all in that little area, you need to get you a bottle probe and go out there and go to town and look because you're probably in a pretty good place to look for one. That's a few of the markers that you really want to look at. And like I said, the reason they put it next to the creek was it was unusable land. It was swampy. Uh, why not put a dump there? You don't want to put a dump on a, a piece of land that's very usable. You want to put it on a place that nobody can use. The reason they put it next to a graveyard was because the graveyard, the people that were there, carried disease and the dump carried disease. So they put the disease things together in the same area, and like I said, around a mile outside of town to keep it away from the town. So that's just a few things for y'all to think about. Oh, the other thing is, the reason it's within a mile is because back then they were pulling garbage wagons with donkeys and mules. So they weren't using a, a truck or a car or whatever to haul their garbage off. They didn't have time to haul it 10 miles out of town. They could only haul it as far as that mule or horse would go during the day on multiple trips back and forth. So it wasn't as far out of town as what you may think. So that's a few of the things that I wanted to bring to y'all's attention. The other thing is, is like I said, the networking aspect of it, of using people like, like I do with my friends that we have that go out and dig. We all use each other as sounding boards. Hey, what do you think about this? The railroad ran here. The creek was there. Uh, there was a, a Coke oven over here, so we know it wasn't there. And at the end of the day, we all come together and we all put our thoughts together. And guess what? It paints a clearer picture than what it would have had if it was just one person. Uh, so that's, that's, I cannot stress enough how important it is to network. The other thing is, is if you want to find the knowledge, a lot of times your bottle diggers are not going to share their locations because of a couple of reasons. One reason is you're, they're going to risk telling you and you're going to dig out all their good stuff. It's kind of like having an awesome fishing hole. You're catching the biggest fish you've ever caught in your life and everybody wants to know where it is. Are you going to tell them? More than likely not. It's sad, but you got to keep your places to yourself because you risk people messing up your area, leaving uncovered holes, leaving dangerous places, uh, even being rude to the local cops or to the local law enforcement. All of that stuff can reflect badly on you even though you were not there. So that's a few things to think about there. Uh, the other thing is, is if you go to the local glass and bottle shows, and you meet these bottle diggers in person, and you meet these old timers that have been doing it for 30 and 40 years, a lot of them are getting to the age where they can't dig anymore. And if they see your face at these shows, and they see that you're very interested, and you, you, you want to know everything about it, well, they're way more out to actually share their information with you than if you just, hey, where are you digging at? Or, hey, where are you digging at? Or, hey, you've never seen me before. How did you find that spot over there? Or, where is your spot? That's not how it works. You have to build a reputation in the community before the information can be shared with you. And that's the same thing with us. We keep our spots uh, between us, five or six people, and it goes no further. And that's no offense to any of the viewers or anything like that. There's only so much room for you to dig. And if we don't know you personally, it makes things a lot harder. So I'm not trying to hurt feelings there, but that's just a few things to look out for. So I hope this video was helpful to y'all and I hope it'll help you find a local dump of your own and I hope you find some great bottles like we have.